Okay, everybody, I did not have any fun ideas today and I did not write a script, so we are just gonna wing it. Somebody sent me this original Oculus Rift, otherwise known as the CV-1, and we're gonna fix it, or at least we're gonna try. So we'll see how this goes. Alrighty guys, welcome back to Fix My Oculus, the channel where we fix, repair, tear down, and talk about all things VR. And I guess today we are talking about the Rift CV-1. I have not worked on one of these things in a long time, so this should be really interesting. Now before we get going, don't forget to like and subscribe for more VR related content like this. And we are still doing our Play for Dream giveaway, so if you want a chance to enter, you can check out the link in the description below. Okay, so if you are kind of newer to the world of VR, the Rift CV-1 was basically the first real Oculus consumer headset. We had the developer kits that came out before that, the DK1 and the DK2, but really other than that, this is kind of where it all started. This is kind of what took VR from being sort of like a cool tech thing to being something that you could actually tangibly buy and, you know, play games on and stuff. It has been around for a long time now. These were announced uh, initially in 2015 and then they were released in March of 2016. And for anybody out there who's like, oh yeah, that was, that was the good old days of Oculus. That was before Facebook bought Oculus. Uh, actually it wasn't. Facebook bought Oculus in 2013. Hold on real quick. Facebook actually bought Oculus in 2014. So this is post Facebook purchase of Oculus. I've talked about it a lot on the channel because there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I have an Oculus Quest 2, or I have the Oculus Quest 1, not the Meta Quest or whatever. And it's like, just so we're clear here, they were produced by the same company. It was just a rebrand. Not trying to be mean, I'm just letting you know. Mark Zuckerberg and his friends owned the company when, uh, when they put this out. So uh, they definitely owned the company when they put out the Oculus Quest 2. But that doesn't really seem to stop people from loving these little headsets. This and the Rift S still get a lot of love in the PC VR community. I kind of joke about this on the channel from time to time, but Preston still plays on a Rift S sometimes. He still loves that headset. But this is a nine year old headset. So what do you get for a nine year old headset compared to like a modern headset? Now, according to VR Compare here, the Oculus Rift, otherwise known as the CV-1, has a 1080 by 1200 per eye resolution and an 87 degree horizontal field of view, which again, was amazing for the time. This little headset retailed for $599 with the controllers and the base stations. Had an IPD range of 58 to 72, two AMOLED screens, about 12 to 13 average pixel density, weighs about 470 grams, and it's a completely tethered headset, which is kind of interesting. You are completely dependent on the uh, Meta app to power this headset. So we're gonna test that out later and uh, see how that works. Cause they are still supported by the Meta app. But let's uh, let's get down to brass tacks. This headset has some issues. It's It's been well loved and we need to get it back into working condition so we can get it back to its owner. We have a broken headphone on this side and then our little face shield in here is just, it's just all torn to shreds. It's, it's terrible. As far as I know, based on the customer notes, it looks like everything else is uh, functional and working. So we really just need a couple replacement parts we need to install those and then we need to test it and make sure that everything works. Now here's the rub. Um, I don't keep a whole lot of CV1 parts on hand. Just nobody, nobody ever sends them in. You get these things on eBay for like 50, 60 bucks, 100 bucks for the whole kit. So really good entry level budget PC friendly VR if that's what you're looking for actually. But yeah, I just, there's really not a whole lot of need to keep a whole lot of parts on hand for them because uh, people just don't send them in. And when you're a repair business with, uh, you know, limited inventory and warehouse space, you're not just like, oh yeah, let's just keep a bunch of these on hand. However, I was kind of thinking that I, I thought we had a bunch of broken ones, like just somewhere. Because for those of you who don't know, we actually got into doing this, like repairing VRs because we used to do VR arcades. So just a fun fact if you didn't know that. So surely I have some somewhere. And I do actually, I found a whole box of these. Four broken CV1s. Got one with a damaged LCD, bad right eye, good display, and no power. So we have some parts to work with. They're just on headsets still. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find one that's got uh, a good facial insert intact. That one's looking pretty good. And then I need the speaker. Actually, this might just be our donor unit right here. That looks pretty good, pretty good. And then we'll see if we can't get this headset back to good condition or at least usable condition. So here's a better look at that headset. And uh, it is just, 
it has just seen some better days. But I think we can, I think we can get this cleaned up. I think we can get this back pretty good. So first things first, um, let's go ahead and take some parts off our donor unit. These headphones come off like silly easy. I don't even think you need a screwdriver for them. I'm just using like my plastic pry tool here. Super easy. These screws here are probably T2s. It's not a T2. Let's see. The T5 seems a little big. I think we're gonna try a T4. I think the T5 kind of worked, but I think a T4 is gonna work a little bit better. Oh yeah, the T4. A T5 was working, but it was kind of slipping a little bit. And this is, this is definitely working better. I probably won't need these screws because I'm gonna have the screws that come off of the actual headset, but you know, it's good to have them anyway. It's kind of a funny angle. There's just barely enough of a lip there to like keep my screwdriver from really seating properly. But I think we got it. That's all the screws on the bottom. And then we've got two more screws on top. So four on the bottom and two on top here. If you're doing this at home for some reason. Cool. Go ahead and take the strap off actually, cause it's just gonna make it a little easier for me. If you've not done this at home, it's the same process on the Quest Ones actually. These little Velcro strips just kind of feed in through here. You just pull that tight all the way. And there's a little tiny clip that just kind of grabs there. And then we can just kind of force that down, slips out there. And I think in theory, if memory serves me correctly, I should be able to, should be able to get under here. And there's a little clip kind of at the bottom here. Oh yeah, just like that. And then we'll do the same thing. I'm just kind of going through the cloth between the cloth and the lens here, being careful not to damage either. And we should just get a pop. There we go. And it's looser on the bottom. We should be able to pop that all the way around. All the way around. And now in theory, this whole thing just comes out like that. Cool. And that's our little inside. It's crazy how much empty space there is in here. It's just screens, really. Tiny little board up top, got a proximity sensor. And then, gosh, it's been such a long time since I opened one of these up, but I'm pretty sure that I can pull these screws out. Bunch of screws. It's like eight screws holding this faceplate in. They're all big screws, too. Two teeny tiny screws down here at the bottom. I just kind of want to finish opening it up, because why not? We're already here. You know what? We'll just take all the screws out. I think I got it. I think we had two screws that were kind of hiding away, but I think now that I got those two out, this whole assembly just kind of comes out kind of, good kind of. And this is just a, this is just a total tricky mess. Whoop. There it is. I have a bracket on this side that kind of holds in some of those cables. So we'll go ahead and take that off. This whole design, as far as like repair goes, is just a little counterintuitive because I'm so used to taking off like face plates on headsets. Um, I would say this is definitely not as common to have to pull the whole assembly out of the shell frame like that. That's kind of weird. But this is effectively what you're looking at. Go ahead and take out, there's like four screws that kind of seem to hold the rest of this together. That face plate should finally come off the front. Hopefully, or maybe not. Are you kidding me right now? Two tiny little baby screws down here. Four tiny little baby screws down here. Wouldn't it be totally ridiculous if these were the only four screws that I actually needed to take out this whole time to take the faceplate off? That would be wild. One final screw. Aha! And finally, our little tracking array. So yeah, honestly, there's not much to it. It's a little hard to get into, but uh, other than that, pretty basic headset. But we got our two replacement parts that we actually need out of the thing. So as long as this speaker works, um, we should be in pretty good shape here. So we're just gonna take our T4 bit and we're just gonna go ahead and take out these screws that hold in this faceplate. And I've got some extra screws now in case I lose one. Always good to have. This is just in rough shape. Fabric is kind of like obscuring my vision. We're actually kind of at an advantage here because we don't have to pop those clips up. 
like I was doing around the displays. So, uh, cause that was, that was probably the hardest part of this was just shooting these blind. But with this one, we, uh, we don't have the fabric in the way, so it's a little bit easier. And then we just kind of set this back in here. Okay, that's looking better already. And then we'll just kind of go back through here and put our screws back in. Go ahead and put our top strap back in place. And then, again, you don't even really need a screwdriver to take this part out. I'm just using a plastic pry tool here and that seems to work pretty well. Make sure that kind of slots in there properly. Now that we've got this all back together, let's go ahead and uh, test it real quick before I wrap up. Testing these things is not as much fun as testing the Quest 2s and 3s. You gotta set up all this stuff. Obviously we gotta plug it into a PC. I need my two base stations, old fashioned Facebook Oculus style base stations here. And then you need some controllers. So if you've not seen these controllers before, these are the original Rift CV1 controllers. And uh, and they're kind of cool. This used to be kind of the standard and now I feel like it's a design that you don't really see in controllers anymore. How's our audio? We've got audio on both sides, one controller and two controllers. I'm glad that audio is working on that side. I didn't pull a bad headphone. Well, it looks like we're tracking and audio is working on both sides. I've got a display in both sides. So I think we're good. Cool, now we can go clean her up and send it home. So everything seems like it's working good. It's displaying, it's tracking, and uh, my audio is working, which is probably the most important thing because I was most concerned that that speaker that I pulled was not going to actually work. So I think what we're gonna do now is just uh, try to get some of this gunk off this headset so that it just looks nice, you know? If you've not seen me do any of my uh, cleaning videos before, isopropyl alcohol and a magic eraser will, uh, will carry you far with these headsets, with any headset, really. For this, uh, for this cloth portion here, I just have a little bit of soapy water, a little bit of water. You don't want to use a lot of water, a little bit of water, just to kind of freshen things up. We're talking really, really small amounts here. And this cloth actually covers a plastic shell, so I'm not really worried about it getting into the components. I wouldn't recommend doing this to your Quest 2, because there's no cloth that really requires this kind of cleaning. Honestly, we're just gonna go over this whole headset here. Straps just got some stuff on it, so we're just gonna again use our magic eraser here. Clean things off. Cool. That strap looks way better now. And then we'll go ahead and just give those lenses a little clean up. They're actually not too bad. For a headset that's nine years old, these lenses are in pretty good shape. But we'll go ahead and wipe them down anyway. And I guess, uh, I guess that's really it. That headset is working and ready to go back home again. Got a little refresh, new speaker, new face shield, and uh, hopefully it holds up for another nine years. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more VR related content like this. And don't forget to enter into our giveaway. We're giving away one of the Play for Dream MR headsets. It's a pretty cool headset if you've not checked out my video on it yet. And the giveaway is free to enter. All you gotta do is click the link in the description below and there's tons of ways to enter. You can share it with friends. You can like our TikTok page. You can do all sorts of things. And you can also go to fixmyoculus.com and enter from there as well. But that really is all I got for you guys today. So we will see you on the next one.